Okay. How's everybody doing? Thank you for the 10 people in attendance right now. Holy shit, where did everybody go? All right, so good news is that you guys are going to see the best fucking presentation of the day. Okay? The bad news is the guys that are outside, excuse my language, are going to be fucked. Right? So, um, what I want to do today is I want to, is, wait, is cursing okay? All right, I just want to make sure. Um, I feel bad, I'm like standing up here. I'm Catholic, I'm standing up here like, jeez. Um, that being said, what I want to talk today is about really how we reimagine this space, right? And when we talk about advertising, clearly if you're not advertising on a mobile device, you're not really advertising, right? So I'm just going to ask the audience, for those in attendance here, how many people actually remember the last time, show of hands, how many people remember the last time that you saw an ad on a mobile device? Show of hands. Holy she's one, two, two, three, all right, four, here we go. So, of you folks, right, how many of you actually remember the name of the brand that was actually in that ad? Do any of you remember one? Was that your client? No? Oh, okay, interesting. I, I asked that because, look, the fact that no one here in attendance could actually raise their hand and actually remember a particular brand that they saw on, that, on an ad on their mobile device is kind of a problem, right? And I think we're all here for that reason, right? To talk about advertising in some way, shape, or form. So I'm gonna be brutally honest, right? As, I, if, as if I haven't been already. Um, here's my opinion on ads, right? Personally, I fucking hate ads. It's my Kanye moment. And, uh, and the reason why I hate ads is because so many times when we talk about ads, right? We think about this, 728 by 90 at the top of my screen. I go now onto my mobile device, it's a 320 by 50, same exact ad, same exact spot. I scroll down, it's my 300 by 250 here. Oh, it gets even better. I get these opportunities where you're just covering all of my content, right? And then the double stack down here, that's incredible, right? Um, and look, these are all really bad experiences for a lot of reasons. Number one is these are screenshots from my device and not one of those are relevant to me. I could care less about any of those. Number two, there's something called banner blindness. When anyone sits here and talks about the fact that we should be running basic ads, that's kind of nonsense because, look, these are basic ads, basic IB formats. When you go to your favorite apps every single day or sites every day, you completely tune them out because you know where they reside and you stop looking at them. That is why you don't remember the last ad that you've actually seen. These here, these kind of interstitials where you get this thing that goes over your page, you're like, oh my God, what the hell's going on? We are conditioned to know that that close button is in the top right corner, right? We go right there, that's why we don't remember those ads. So, the other thing that really annoys me, again, I'm being brutally honest, is every time you go to conferences and we talk about um, you know, advertising and these mobile devices, someone within the first five minutes of their presentation will say, well, it's about the right person and the right place and the right time. When you have that, that's nonsense. It's so much more than just the data. Now, don't get me wrong, at Verve, we, 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 you know, we get first-party data. We match 87% of household devices in the U.S. Data is important, right? But it's completely half of the story. When someone gets up on stage and they say that, I want to have one of these Kanye moments right here. Why is this guy so mad? Uh, so let's talk about it for a second, right? Because I think the biggest missing piece, right, is creative, right? It's the design. And when we talk about design, what does this color represent to you? Anybody? Fear. Anybody else? S stop, right? Stop. We're conditioned to know that red is stop, right? So every day, right, we go out and we see these objects. Stop sign, stop light, red means stop. But does this make any sense to anybody? Whoops. Does that make any sense, right? God forbid there's a fire, right? Oh, we're gonna try to click this again. God forbid there's a fire. What color is fire? Exit sign's gone, right? Poor design, yet people have been using that for years, right? Fortunately, there are some people that are making changes, right? And so again, I'll speak to the fact that it is so important that you have both of these folks in the same room. And if they're not, then you're not getting real advertising. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, right? So. Consistently what we see in this space is people will do one or the other, right? You have your data folks over here and they're talking about that first party data and it's precise, et cetera, et cetera. But the problem with that is when you just talk about data, 
you miss the creative. So it doesn't matter how good your data is. It does not matter if you get that right person at that right micro moment. If that creative is crap, it absolutely means nothing. Okay? Other side, you have the creative guys, and the creative guy is building these big, flashy experiences. And while that's amazing, all right, and I commend so many of you that's doing that, if you don't, on the other hand, understand who that individual is when you deliver that to them, now you've created a completely intrusive experience. So I'm going to show you a bad experience. I'm driving down the street in my car. Clearly, Verve pays me really well. And for those of you who can't see, I know the screen's a little dark. I'm not that much of an a-hole. That is a Photoshop job. <laughs> and I'm using Waze. Does anybody in here use Waze? Is there anybody that works at Waze here? Good. So <laughs> I'm using Waze, and it might be hard to see the screen, but you're going to see here, it is 12.50 p.m. They serve me this ad for Quiznos, right? So right timing, right, because it's lunch. I am point one miles from my destination, one minute. You see here, I am a half a block from where I need to go. Does anybody see the problem with this creative? I'm going to zoom in. Anybody? Shout it out. 36 minutes to my drive that's one minute away. That's crazy. Needs to say, I can't stand Quiz. Is there Quiznos brand in here? No? Good. I fucking can't stand Quiznos, right? So, so there's just this the bad ad experience for me all around. Now, we did this research, so I'm not going to go into it, but we reached out to thousands of, thousands of individuals across the US and essentially asked them what to them is the perfect ad. And through this research, what was interesting is, these people feel as though their mobile devices are an extension of who they are, right? And we actually call this group of individuals the mobile prodigies. They are the lower half of Gen Z and later half of the millennials. And when we asked them what was the perfect ad to them, you know, these are three topics here that we wanted to hit on today, which they are embracing app ecosystem. That's where they're spending their time. They are demanding inventive content, right? It has to be inventive, right? Um, and they're granting data. They are 100% okay with giving their data individuals, right? Because they feel that you as a brand better know them better than they know themselves. And guess what? If you say, hi, Walt, in an email, you're being polite. You're being courteous, right? You should be giving me the things that you know that I want. So what we want to do here is actually talk through some of the creators and show you some of the results. We saw 95% said they want to make a purchase based on creators they've seen, right? So why not, if we're going to keep this standard banner at the bottom, what we're doing with this unit is the fact that every time and only when you scroll, that banner will animate, right? And it's subtle, but the reason why we're doing that is because you want to drive attention down to these solutions. You want people to actually start looking at them. But the beauty about this is we're measuring this the same way we measure uh, video content, right? So we have quartiles. So now imagine your creative animation might be 10 or 15 seconds long. You can now understand what is that sweet spot amount of time where you're actually starting to see that people are actually engaging or reading this content and then potentially dropping off. Right, so just a subtle way to, again, drive attention and drive focus down to that spot. We've also seen that 39% want it to be customized, right, based on uh, products that they want to buy, right? We also learned here that when we're doing that buying process on a mobile device, it's a lengthy one, right? Can anyone just shout out how many steps it might take to get someone from a banner to actually make a purchase for a product? Anybody? Shout out. Five. Anyone else? 10. I'm not going to go through all of them, but that's a lot, right? I have 42 more slides to go, so I'm not going to go there. So, so 10, right? So we, we, it, and that's amazing to me because of the fact that we live in a place where on Amazon, I can go with one click and make a purchase. I can actually go, well, I was watching a conference a couple, week, or a couple months ago, and one of the presidents from Google got on stage, and he was like, yes, last night I was on my mobile device, and I scrolled down the page, I selected the car that I want, and then I put in my bank card account information and bought a $110,000 vehicle. I wish I had that kind of money. But in five minutes, you can do that type of transaction. So why is it that no one is actually doing these in ad formats? So what we decided to do is, well, let's do that. So the same unit, as I scroll, you see products that we know you like. You can have the ability to add it to cart directly here from that screen. You can go and view your bag and then make it full transaction, right? So this is all about if you know what these individuals might like, you want to get the right product in front of them, allow them to engage. And if you allow them to engage, let them go and actually make that purchase, that transaction. Now, the key to some of these also is that when we build these solutions, we want these ads to feel less like ads. I always say they're not ads, they're experiences, right? Especially when you talk about these mobile devices. So it's about really creating opportunities that people are going to want to actually engage in for longer periods of time. Now, 80% said they want ads to be tailored, right, to recognize their location, interests, and hobbies, and things of that nature. But this is a really interesting one. 
46% said they want to be able to save it and access it later. So what we learned in this study is that when, when, when these folks are actually seeing an ad or something that they like, they screenshot it, right? But when you're doing things like video content or rich media uh, experiences, that's gone. We also know that so many of us, when we start thinking about location, the first thing that comes to mind is geofencing. And truth be told, if I'm outside of a McDonald's and you serve me an ad for McDonald's, I'm not going to walk and turn around and go and buy a Big Mac. It just doesn't work like that, right? So what we decided to do is, well, how do we create an opportunity that we can actually give to someone and allow them to engage with it when they want to engage with it? Now, in what we do, we're not necessarily, you know, yes, we can geofence, but we also focus on the kind of path that an individual is taking, right? We know where you live, where you work, the places you go to. We know that me as an individual, I commute an hour and 45 minutes from Long Island into uh, Manhattan every day for work. I go and um, I, you know, go to Target and things of that nature on the weekends. So what if I actually had this ad and I delivered it to me when I'm on my commute to work that allows me to actually save this experience and access it when I want to? So here I'm actually going through multiple products. I can actually scroll up view map, I see my exact location where I'm at and where the nearest location that I want to go for, for in this case would be Target. And then that button on the top right hand side, that allows me to now save this down to my device. Now the beautiful thing about this is that, look, an ad campaign has a start date and an end date. Every single one does. But the nice thing about this now is that with this solution, you essentially don't have an extended, like a period of time in which it goes down. So within a few steps, I can save it and it goes directly down to my device. Now, this Saturday or Sunday when I have time to actually go into that store, I can tap on that and open up that same experience. We can change it dynamically, weekly, monthly, et cetera. And now imagine you have this brand of yours that sits on someone's device that allows them to engage when they want to engage and literally take them directly to the store when they're ready to go to that store. And let's be honest here, who watches pre-roll? Nobody, right? So research shows what we do is this. I pick up, I click to play video, video content shows, I put it down. When I hear the content change, I go back and I pick it up and engage, right? So we also know that everyone is now cutting these 30 second spots and it's all about short form video content. So what we decided to do is, well, why don't we actually make a six to seven second video solution, treat it kind of like pre-roll, but actually do it on content, right? So now this ad starts to play for about two seconds down here. All of a sudden, we animate up. We stay about a third of the page up. We will allow you to close if you'd like, or you can continue to scroll up and down your content. We don't want to block it. And then when we're done, we actually collapse down and let you continue with your experience. So now at any point in time, you can actually tap on that engage and go into a full length trailer. And that's cool. But what if we did something that's more impactful? Clearly, we know where you live and places you frequent, et cetera. What if you combine this format with an understanding of where you live and where you're currently at, and then you work with a brand like this? Anybody familiar with the Black Mirror on Netflix? Yes? Anybody not? Show of hands, maybe? All right, so I'll, very quickly, so Black Mirror is a show that they just did season four, and it's basically about technology and how the advancements in technology has completely screwed over society, right, and human beings. So what we decided to do is when Netflix came across and they said, well, what can we do, you know, for this, for this brand that would make sense? So we said, well, wouldn't it be cool if we gave someone a holiday card, because this ran right before Christmas, a holiday card that was all nice and whatnot, said, hey, happy holidays from Netflix and Black Mirror, and then we actually said, we know where you're at, and showed you a picture of your house in the creative. That would probably freak a lot of people out. Uh, and that was their intent, right? We were like, well, maybe we shouldn't scale it out to so many people. Maybe we should target the people that have already seen the show. And they're like, absolutely not. We want to scare the hell out of people. Cool.
I, I wish I could say we did that, but we totally didn't. That was Adobe. Um, has, so I, I played that for a reason. Has anybody seen this stat? Anybody? Might be as old as me in this space No. This was done by Comscore about eight years ago. What it essentially did was, was this gigantic report that said, hey, the wrong people are clicking on ads, right? If 8% of the internet audience is responsible for 85% of clicks, yet all of us are like, oh, we need to measure CTA, and, or, excuse me, interaction rates and clicks. Like, for the clicks, that doesn't mean anything really, right? But the problem is when we start looking at mobile devices, we're making the same exact mistakes that we made eight years ago. We knew that that was the problem, right? Yet today, clicks on desktop is the same thing as a tap on a mobile device, yet CTA for every single ad, 99 plus probably percent of ads on a mobile device is what? Tap, tap to expand, tap to this, tap to that. So we decided to do this, well what if we actually flip that? What if we created opportunities that are more cohesive with the device and calls to action and functionality more cohesive with the device? Things like sweat, swipe, spread, pinch, zoom, right? And then you end up with solutions like this. Whereas imagine if I come up to this creative, this 300 by 250, it says here drag to reveal luxury. I place my hand, my hand on the ad and start to pull it across and then you'll notice it's all call to action changed. Now in every single corner it actually points outward, that arrow, and it says in this case tap right now or pinch to actually go larger. And when you actually do that, it opens up into these larger formats. Now, it's nothing new from the point of view that that's a, an expandable banner, great, but a different way to engage that someone's gonna actually remember. And things like false taps and whatnot will never happen in here because someone has to engage intentionally, right? And while we talk about that, look, simplicity goes a long way. It's not necessarily about you know, rebuilding stuff that already works, right? Find a simple way to get something to work. And, and in that case, when we look at our formats, so we said, well, Let's think about how people approach mobile devices today, right? We know that when people go to Spotify, or excuse me, um, uh, things like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, they do what? They don't tab to go to different pages, they scroll, right? They have things like hamburger menus and things like that. So now imagine if you had this opportunity here, this looks and feels like an app, not like an ad. You can scroll through multiple pages, just like you do on these dozen social networks. Top left here, we have a hamburger menu. I tap on that and I can now deep dive down into other areas of this format, right? Go through video content, galleries, we have things like live maps, etc. So again, the thing is, create an opportunity that's familiar with someone. Right? Create ways to engage that I'm already engaging already. And our, and our bread and butter, and I'm, I'm almost done right here, but our bread and butter is tap to map, right? Our whole thing is like, yes, we understand who you are, and yes, we understand where you go, and things of that nature. But we also know that we've actually then driven you to go to a particular location, right? So we have this format that we actually call our tap to map, and now in about another week or two, we're going to roll out this updated version of it. So you'll see here, once you actually open up this, this uh, creative, the first thing you'll see down in the lower half is your nearest, your nearest location, and we're automatically right then and there showing you the directions to get there. If you actually open that up, you have multiple different uh, addresses that you can actually, or locations, you can actually swipe through to actually dynamically change that real time, and then you go and get directions, and all of that experience happens within the ad. I don't have to leave the ad to go to Google Maps or Apple Maps to get directions. We're keeping them in there. So now you talk about things like um, time spent are now gonna go through the roof. But the way we're actually taking this a little further at the end of this quarter is by applying things like augmented reality. So now when I open that up, I automatically see directly ahead of me, right here, when I swipe up to actually view more, then I have an option. I can have the map view, or I can have this augmented reality view. If I decided on that view, then what we see here is that real-time opportunity. And then, of course, drive me directly to my location. Was that cool? All right. Uh, thank you. That made me feel better about myself. So, so, but at the end of the day, why even touch the screen to engage? We know that these devices have something called an uh, accelerometer in there, right? So we know that we don't naturally just hold our devices completely still when we're looking at content, right? We subtly move it a little bit, right? You move it a little bit to the left, or you move it a little bit to the right. So now imagine you garner that attention by allowing a creative like this to subtly change as you're moving your device around. If I now decide to tip it all the way forward or all the way back or left or right, now you can actually allow for that individual to engage without having to touch that screen. <clears throat> and what I'll say again is like, I said this earlier, it's not ads, these are experiences. And it's so important to make sure that you have both of these guys in the same room. 
majority of my entire creative team sits in the same exact room with our analytics team. And that's done intentionally because my creative team needs to understand how all of the analytics works. The analytics team needs to understand everything that we're trying to build. So when you bring those together, you create opportunities where you're allowing brands to essentially stand on stage and talk directly to the people that matter. Thank you very much.